Good morning, everyone. Good morning. It's good to see each one of you here this morning. Today, a little bird told me, well, she wasn't so little, but she told me anyway, Margaret Carpenter's having a birthday today. Oh, my goodness. There are many birthdays in the whole month of April. I don't know what went on. But, <laughs> but there's going to be July Party 4th. City all month long here. But, um, and, and I will let Margaret tell you, if she chooses, how many years young she is. Holy smoke. There you go. 94. Happy birthday to you. There are many learning opportunities and several meetings of our boards and teams this week. Make sure you check those listings on page three of our order of worship today so you'll know where to be and when to be there. Thank you everyone who participated in our Easter blessing offering. Thank you for honoring your loved ones in such a beautiful way. You'll see a listing of those individuals on page six in the order of worship today. These offerings go toward the general budget of the church, and we are grateful for your gifts. There are several names that have been added to the prayer list. Uh, Lynette Stenberg is still in need of prayer. She's healing nicely. She's just had a couple of, of issues that she's dealing with. Larry Cornelius uh, he's back there, sitting there, uh, almost to the back of the room. We're still praying for you, buddy. Bob Krieger um, has had a couple of procedures this past few days, and so continue to pray for he and Sandy. And then I must tell you that our brother Bill Reeves passed away just this morning. And so we want to pray for the family. They are either here or they're in route as we speak. In just a few weeks, April 21st, at our, uh, here in the sanctuary, 3 p.m., Valley Women's Ensemble will be singing a uh, program of contemporary music. Tickets are on sale now. You can either see me or you can go on our website, Valley Women's Ensemble, and, uh, and pick up your tickets. It's going to be a great time of, of music. Then I was given on the way in. I don't know why it was pink, but anyway, <laughs> a, a pink water bottle. And you know that we are uh, taking donations for these. They don't all have to be pink, and, but, but we would like them to be this size. And if you have any questions, there's some information about that in our donation area back there. Make sure that if you can pick up uh, three or four of those, that would be very helpful. Okay? Our... New faith community nurse who goes by the name of Jane Peak. Where are you? Oh, could you stand up? You're a little short, so they might not be able to see you. <laughs> She's going to be helping us out in a variety of ways, but back in our uh, Bailey Resource Center, or what we've used to call the library, she's going to be doing blood pressure screenings. So get some, uh, get some coffee in you, and then go get your blood pressure taken. <laughs> Speaking of upcoming events, tell me, Pastor Paul, what is it like to have spent nearly 31,536,000 minutes here on the planet? <laughs> That's right, kids. This Tuesday, Pastor Paul will celebrate his 21st birthday with 39 years experience. <laughs> Don't let aging get you down. Okay. Because it's hard to get back up. <laughs> Folks, those are not gray hairs. They are wisdom highlights. <laughs> yeah. We'll yeah. hear that in his sermon yeah. in a few minutes, won't we? Happy birthday, my friend. Thank you. I'm going to let you try it out first, see okay. how it goes, then, then and then I'll see if I want to follow, all right? <laughs> now I would like to invite Ellen Merchant to share with us some upcoming opportunities. Welcome, Ellen. Glad to see you. Thank you. Hello, my name is Ellen Merchant. You might know me as the Apron Lady. 
Today, I want to share with you some of the amazing Doing Grief Community Healing Project events we have coming up, including Morning Light Cafe with Grief Educator Reverend Shay Darian and host Dr. Andrew Darian this coming Friday morning, April 12th, and every other Friday in April and May. This coming Saturday morning, April 13th, we have the Healing Properties of Slow Stitching with retired UCC Pastor Jane Jones. Drum making and painting with Dr. Lydia Woods and the Story Circle Small Group with Reverend Susan Prince House both have limited spots and are already full. But we can make room for you at my workshop, Healing with Freeform Fiber Sculpting, on Saturday, April 20th from 9.30 to 11.30 a.m. I have had a penchant for fiber arts since I was a little girl. I started out embroidering, crocheting, and making doll clothes. I have continued the love of fiber arts throughout my life, and it has helped me through many difficult times in my life and helped me to express myself, especially during times of grief. I came to learn about freeform sculpt fiber sculpting when I happened to read a book called Entwined, a true story about an artist named Judith Scott who was born deaf and with Down syndrome. She spent many years in an institution before her sister rescued her and brought her to San Francisco and a community art center. Despite being unable to verbally communicate, Judith found a way to communicate through fiber sculpture by weaving, wrapping, and binding various yarns and materials around all kinds of objects. She was often known to weave in and hide various objects within her sculptures, so you couldn't leave anything important lying around. I think she actually wove in someone's house keys once. <laughs> <laughs> During my fiber arts class, you two will have the opportunity to, cho opportunity to choose from various yarns, fabric scraps, and objects to wrap and bind together in whatever way your creative mind takes you. If you choose to create a piece dedicated to someone you have lost, a meaningful part of this art form can include hiding a small object within the sculpture that only you will know about and others if you wish to share. I will have some charms and things available, but you are welcome to bring something from home to include in your sculpture. I hope you will join us for this fun, creative, and healing workshop. There are lots of other great programs coming up this spring, so grab an event flyer on the Narthex table or outside the chapel and RSVP for any programs you'd like to attend. We hope to see you there. Thank you. And there are some examples of the freeform fiber sculpture on the Narthex table as well. Thank you. Thank you, Ellen. Well, good morning and welcome to the Church of the Palms, part of the United Church of Christ. I'm Pastor Paul. You've met Pastor Jim, and today with us is, is Jen. Well, Jen, you know the best way to have an eclipse party? You plan it. <laughs> There's something growing on your piano, too. You may have to stand up and play like Barry Manilow today for <laughs> folks to see. You know, my, 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 dad, my jokes are dad jokes because they are full grown and apparent. Yeah, yeah. Also with us today is Deb and Elaine helping us and there's all of you as well. We are grateful you came today. Today is one of my favorite Sundays of the liturgical year because the biblical text is so real to my experience of life. Like the disciples, particularly Thomas, sometimes we don't know what to believe. I had been a pastor for five years before I discovered how hard it was to have a loved one in the hospital. I had visited hospitals hundreds of times, talked with patients, talked with families of hospital patients. But it wasn't until my mom had an unexpected hospital stay that I saw for the first time with new eyes the difficulties of having a family member in the hospital. I felt for the first time the strain, the stress, the frustrations. That time, trying to support my mom, trying to work with my dad and my siblings, changed my ministry and gave me much more, a much more sympathetic ear, compassionate heart, not only for the patient, but for the family. Having a close family friend become a nurse, having another close family friend become a hospitalist, helped me see things in a new way as well. 
Our text today has Jesus meeting us at our time of our greatest loss, guiding us back with our brothers and sisters in our common life together. So today, come as your authentic self, knowing that God loves you and me and sends us out with our doubts, with our misgivings and our uncertainties to bring others to the peace of God. Welcome to worship. Good morning. Please join me in our call to worship. We are now in the church season called Eastertide. Consequently, it is a fitting time to consider that our resurrection faith has tidal qualities. Faith breaks upon us 
as waters upon the shore, molding and shaping. Sometimes it smooths our rough and jagged edges, and at other times it pulls at us to expose new sharpness. Faith uncovers what has previously been hidden. It also reminds us that the castles we build and cherish are not important and do not last compared to the eternal vastness of God's transforming love. Faith brings us surprises, laying them before us as though they were dropped by an outgoing tide. Its offerings connect us with people in far off places like Ukraine, the Middle East, as well as places like inner city Phoenix, plus drainage dishes and washes where people live. Its gifts include living things such as hope and charity. Faith tells us of God's power and grace, both ever in motion as the seas, both ever present whether we are at high or low points in our lives. Faith constantly beckons. It seems to stretch towards us as the waters of a new broken wave reach out to the walker on the shore. In gathering during this season of Eastertide, we open ourselves to a God who changes us, informs us, draws us, surprises us. May our worship be Easter title, our community filled with spirit. Please stand in body or in spirit and join in our opening hymn. In our spiritual reading sections of worship, we present different quotes from a variety of people and perspectives. Some of the people you might be familiar with, others not so much. All have wisdom for us regarding dealing with struggles and scars. Demi Lovato is an American singer, songwriter, and actress. She said, I think scars are like battle wounds, beautiful in a way, they show what you've been through and how strong you are for coming out of it. Known for his role as Superman, 
Christopher Reeve was an actor and film director, author, and activist. Reeve lived the last nine years of his life paralyzed from the shoulders down from a fall from a horse. He said, a hero is an ordinary individual who finds the strength to persevere and endure in spite of overwhelming obstacles. Helen Keller was an American author, disability rights advocate, political activist, and lecturer. Keller attended Radcliffe College of Harvard University and became the first deaf-blind person in the United States to earn a Bachelor of Arts degree. She taught, character cannot be developed in ease and quiet. Only through experience of trial and suffering can the soul be strengthened, ambition inspired, and success achieved. American actress and activist Jane Fonda said, you don't learn from successes. You don't learn from awards. You don't learn from celebrity. You only learn from wounds and scars and mistakes and failures. And finally, Leonard Cohen was a Canadian singer, songwriter, poet, and novelist. Themes commonly explored throughout his work included faith and mortality, isolation and depression, betrayal and redemption, social and political conflict, sexual and romantic love, desire, regret, and loss. He wrote, children show scars like medals. Lovers use them as secrets to reveal. A scar is what happens when the word is made flesh.
Our scripture lesson today comes from the gospel according to John chapter 20, and I'll be reading verses 19 to 31. When it was evening on that day, the first day of the week, and the doors of the house where the disciples had met were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples rejoiced when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, so I send you. When he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you retain the sins of any, they are retained. But Thomas, who was called the twin... One of the twelve was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we have seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see the mark of the nails in his hand and put my finger in the mark of the nails and my hand in his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were again in the house and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were shut, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands. Reach out your hand and put it in my side. Do not doubt, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet come to believe. Now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not written in this book. But these are written so that you may come to believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that through believing you may have life in his name. The word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you please pray with me? May the words of my mouth, the meditations of all of our hearts, the thoughts of our minds, the actions of our lives be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, for you are our strength and our redeemer. Amen. So 23 years ago, I was trimming a tree with a chainsaw. Right? No big deal. No big deal. I had done it before. So many times I couldn't count. Right? So I'm on an eight-foot ladder. And, you know, I couldn't, could, I couldn't quite reach that, that final branch. And so I stepped on that rung that clearly states... Do not stand on this. Okay. Okay. Side side note, there's a reason they put warnings on stuff like that because of people like me. Well, just, just as I finished cutting that branch, my foot slipped. The first part of me that hit anything was the corner of my eye which hit the top of the ladder... Then I crashed to the ground and I was knocked out. Fortunately, my neighbor and friend was sitting on his front porch watching me the whole time. Probably laughing at me until I got hurt and then really laughing at me because I got hurt. Um, I don't remember any of it. He's the one who told me what happened. Now, fortunately, it was a Saturday and Wendy was home and she took me to urgent care and all I'm left with is, is a little scar in the corner of my eye. But worse than the physical scar is the emotional one. Because in all seriousness, to this day, when I start climbing a ladder, the hands start to shake, the, the heart starts to thump, and the legs and knees start to get wobbly, and my mind begins to panic, There are emotional scars that I have that you'd never know just looking at me. 
Well, today, we're one Sunday after Easter. One Sunday after that great triumph of God. Easter was that great setting right of all that death made wrong. Death, evil, injustice. Easter says that God's good purposes will not be defeated. That in the resurrection of Jesus, God triumphed. In today's gospel, the risen Christ slips through closed doors and appears before the despondent disciples. But they don't know him. Oh, he speaks to them as he spoke so often, saying peace. But they, they seem to still not know him. And then the author of John says, he showed them his hands and his side. In other words, he showed them his scars. And then, oh, then they saw and they rejoiced. Now Thomas, Thomas, well, he, he shows up a little later. He wasn't there with the other disciples out for that first Easter appearance. The other disciples tell him of the risen Christ, but Thomas says, whoa, 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 wait, 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 wait a second here, wait. Unless I see the mark in the, of the nails in his hands, and, and, unless I can put my, my hand at his side, you know, I'm not going to believe anything like that. Well, a week later, the risen Christ surprises the disciples, and Thomas is there, and Jesus obliges. Put your finger here, says the risen Christ. Don't doubt, believe. Somehow, here is some connection between a connection is made between the risen Christ and scars. Maybe it's never occurred to you, but being raised from the dead didn't erase his scars. The Christ of Easter bears the marks made on Good Friday. Jesus' disciples, like Thomas, recognized him as risen only by touching his scars. Easter, the, the stunning triumph of God, the great victory over death and defeat, doesn't erase the scars. Maybe you've never, maybe you've heard this statement. If, if you're a, a Christian, a real Christian, you'll always feel joy and peace in your heart. But real Christians do feel sadness. Is there something wrong? Is it that our faith is not firm yet? Heavens, no. Bad things happen. And sometimes we bear significant scars. The risen Christ had scars. The risen Christ has just moved from death to life, triumphant from the grave. In his exalted form, the disciples didn't recognize him. It was only when he showed them the scars that they knew him. So I say, don't be too hard on, on Thomas when he says, you know, I'm not going to believe it's Jesus unless I can poke my finger into the nail print of his hands. Thomas isn't being simply obstinate. Thomas may be saying, you know, I'm not going to believe it's Jesus until I can touch the scars because the Jesus I know, he has wounds. They knew him, I think, because the Jesus whom they loved, didn't hover over the heartache of the world. He embraced the pain. He touched with care and sorrow. He lived where we live and died as we must die. Early on in the, in the Christian faith, there was a fringe group called docetism. Docetism said that Christ really didn't suffer on the cross, really didn't live as we must live on earth. He only appeared to suffer and be human. It was just an act to have us act like him. And the early church rightly said, no, the risen Christ bore human scars. Only a wounded God can save. 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 24 goes as far as to say, by his wounds... You have been healed. To be human is to have scar tissue inside and out. You have scars, human that you are. Some are physical, some are emotional, some are spiritual. I have scars. 
Some are physical, some emotional, some are spiritual. The risen Christ, the Christ after Easter, has scars. Now, there are people who think Easter has overcome all that. They they think that, well, just because Jesus is raised from the dead, the cross is set right, overcome, fixed, forgotten, and the church once again has said no. The risen Christ bore the nail prints in his side, in his hands and side. That's how they knew the mysterious stranger who stood before them was none other than Jesus. The Christian faith doesn't deny pain, the reality of the wound, the existence of the scar. Our faith enables us to go in the name of the risen Christ, even with our wounds. But there still are scars The risen Christ was known by his wounds. During all my years as a pastor, in all the churches I have served, one common denominator I have found is that people come to me right at the beginning of my ministry at that particular church, and they they tell me something. They tell me about some past wound. Some past wound they have suffered. Suffered before I came to that particular church. Why? Why do they tell me? Not to wallow in some self-pity some, for some wrong which has been afflicted. I think they tell me that so that I will know them. It seems they, they're saying, you'll know me now as Thomas knew the risen Christ by his scars. The risen Christ was known by his star, scars We're known by ours, too. Years ago, I knew a person who was assaulted at 10 o'clock in the morning in her own front yard, and it was a terrible thing. And she suddenly disappeared from church activities, and I was the only one in the church who knew why. Through a good counselor and family support, she began her way back. One day she called me, telling me that her counselor, as part of her therapy, wanted her to tell someone other than family member or pastor what happened to her. Wanted her to articulate for someone else her tragedy. So I began to think of possible candidates to whom she could tell her story. And I knew these people had to be very sensitive and caring so that they could really hear her story and bring her healing that she so desperately wanted. I gave her a list of folks in the congregation for her to consider. When she told me the person she had picked, I got to confess that I was shocked. The person wasn't on the list of people I provided. The man... The man was an alcoholic who had a public history of falling off the proverbial wagon more times than I can count. He was in AA. He was in NA, Narcotics Anonymous. And I was surprised, and I guess I sounded kind of shocked when I said, why do you want to tell him? Because, she said rather firmly, he knows what, it, he knows what it's like to go through hell. And live to tell about it. Curious. Sometimes there are wounds that bring healing to others. Strange. Somebody who the world regarded as a failure bore the wounds that helped lead another to wholeness. Maybe that's the only way any of us get healed is through wounded healers. It's hard to be helped by someone who hasn't been there. Some docetic deity who has no scars. Wow, you've got scars. Some visible. Some invisible. Some more visible as you age. I've got scars. Some are visible, some are invisible, and some are more visible as I age. The one who calls us here this day. Our Savior, the risen one, also has scars to show of God's love. So if you're in the same boat as Thomas, 
If you're not sure what to believe, the good news is that Jesus will graciously show you the scars that you might believe and that through believing you might have life in God's name. Now, now some people, they put on their Sunday best for, for church and for God, you know, the best clothing, the best makeup to hide any faults, the, the best face to hide any emotional stress or problems. But I don't think that's how God wants us to come. I think God wants us to be real, our real authentic self. That's, that's who God wants. At least that's what I tell my, my siblings in the LGBTQ plus community and everyone else. The only way to come to God is as our authentic self, which includes gray hair, warts, Wrinkles, sadness, joy, strength, talents, fear, and yes, scars, and all the rest. By doing so, we might be helping someone else get through a rough spot in their life. I think that's what Anne Lamont had in mind when she said, quote, We are not here to see through one another, but to see one another through by being real we can help each other more than we can possibly realize Jesus showed scars long ago and even today so that we can be real with God and with each other being real with God and each other is a way to find peace that we so desperately seek thanks be to God Amen. Spring, springtime changes are bursting forth. The earth is awakening with a wondrous display of color. The cycle of living and dying continues. Lens has passed and the celebration of Easter Sunday is over. But the message of new life, new awakenings, and new possibilities remains with us. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 
Jesus appears and offers peace to the disciples. He shows them his hands, his side. He sends them forth into the world with the gift of the Holy Spirit. With God's grace to guide us, we too are witnesses to Christ's resurrection, sharing our gifts with all in need. The truth of God's love has brought light to the world. Let all who have seen that light strive to live it and live in it so that Christ's promise of peace may dispel the shadows of need. We remember that Jesus took and offered the bread in thanksgiving and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, Jesus offered the cup in thanksgiving and said, Take, drink, this is the new covenant which is poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Open our eyes to the mystery of new beginnings in these ordinary things, in these, our ordinary lives. May they be for us the very essence of the living Christ in our midst. Through the broken bread, we, we participate in the body of Christ. Through the cup of blessing, we participate in the new life Christ gives. These are the gifts of God for the people of God. All things are ready. As we see Christ in these elements, so may others see Christ in us. You are in, invited to go to a communion station near you. Will you please join me in our unison prayer of thanksgiving? Blessed are you, O God, for you have set us free from fear. You have come to us to give light to guide our feet in the journey of life. Through their spirit, may we share love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, generosity, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. May the peace of Christ rule in our hearts that we may be ambassadors of God in what we say and in what we do. We pray in the name of Jesus who taught us to pray, saying, Our Creator, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory. I see a coin. Maybe I should keep it. Hmm. Better yet. Tell you what, Pastor Jim will flip for it. We'll flip whoever wins gets, gets to keep the coin. Um, heads I win, tails you lose. <laughs> the truth is everybody wins when we share our time, talent, and treasure. At the Palms... You do, I do, the community and the world wins. 
What you give makes a difference in this world. No doubt about it. Thank you for your gifts of time, talent, and treasure. Ushers, would you come forward? Holy God, we come with our whole selves. Take what we are and what we share and bless it so that all might live in peace. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Well, we have come to the end of a service in this room. And now we go to a service out there. When you're asked what kind of love comes in that God that you love, one who gives everything, and then when we ask, but can I just touch your scars? And he allows us to be that intimate. That's the kind of relationship that our God wants with each of us. Will you stand to your feet? Receive this blessing. We have come from darkness and despair to hope and joy. We have been transformed into new life. So go forth and witness and testify to that message of hope that we can receive every day, every day, in every way. Amen? Amen. Let's sing.